Hello, welcome to Wildwood. At the end of May 2020, we took charge of an animal we hadn't had here at the park for several years, namely an American mink. We currently have just the one American mink. His name is Neo. I'm not entirely sure if he's named after the character from The Matrix or because the scientific name for the American mink is Neo Vison Vison. He's a very bright, lively individual, and so far he's proved to be a big hit both with the keepers and with the visitors. Mink are a type of mustelid, the same family that includes the weasels and the polecats, and they have very similar body shapes to their more familiar cousins. The mink's head is pointed, with small eyes, rounded ears, and long whiskers. The body is proportionally long, slim, and remarkably flexible. The legs are short, but powerful. The tail is quite long and fairly bushy, and the fur is dark with a white patch on the chin. Perhaps the most remarkable feature about the mustelids is how they've managed to adapt the same long, slim body shape to so many different lifestyles. The pine martins, well, they live right up in the treetops, running and jumping from branch to branch. The polecats, they spend a lot of their time hunting underground. And the mink, the mink are as good on land as in water. They are truly amphibious. They can dive to depths of six meters and they can swim underwater for up to 30 meters. Mink and otters are sometimes confused with each other, which is understandable. They are both mustelids and they live in water. European otters are larger. They have an average body length with tail of about 1.3 meters. Mink are smaller. They're usually about 70 centimeters. Uh, the heads, the faces are very different. Otters have fairly low flat skulls. The mink have more polecat-like faces, so pointed. An otter has a very long, powerful tail. The mink tail, as I mentioned earlier, is bushy. Otters tend to be more shy they predominantly come out at night. Mink have been described rather nicely as being boisterous. They'll be active almost any time of the day or night. And the final big difference between the two, otters are aquatic, mink are amphibious. Otters do better in the water. They have become more adapted to life in the water, aquatic. As I mentioned earlier, mink are truly amphibious, just as good on land or water. It used to be believed that in areas where you've got European otters, they drove out the mink. We're now believing that this is not the case. What's actually happening is the mink change their hunting strategies. In the areas that have the otters, they stop hunting in the water and only hunt on the land. As I said at the start, Neo is an American mink, but we do have mink native to Europe. They are completely different species. The American mink is known as Neo Vison Vison. The European mink is Mustella lutriola. The European mink is smaller than the American. The tail is not as long, but the real giveaway feature is that it has white not only on its chin, but either sides of its nose on the upper lip. And you almost never see that in the American mink. European mink are a true endangered species. Historically, they were found across most of Europe, north into Scandinavia, east into Russia. Uh, fossils from southern England suggest that they were here half a million years ago. Today, European mink are only found in parts of France and Spain in the west, and Romania and Ukraine in the east. The reason for their decline is down to several different factors. There's been habitat loss. Like the American mink, they like wetland areas, and those have been drained for land use. There's pollution, which is affecting not only the European mink directly, but also their food source. They've been hunted for many, many years for fur. And finally, there's the arrival of their cousins, the American mink. And it's been proved in areas that have both the European 
and the American mink, numbers of Europeans start to drop when the American mink turn up. So how on earth did American mink end up in the UK? Well, quite simply, they used to be farmed for their fur. Mink coats have always been very expensive. They've been seen as a mark of quality and wealth. Uh, there are even some films and books that have the word mink in their title, such as That Touch of Mink and Make Mine Mink. In 1962, there were 561 registered mink farms in Britain. And unfortunately, mink over the years have either escaped from those farms or been deliberately released. In 1956, the first wild born mink were reported on the River Tain down in Devon. In the 1960s, the Ministry of Agriculture trapped more than 5,000 mink in England and Wales. But to be honest, by that stage, the genie was well and truly out of the bottle. I mentioned that there have even been deliberate releases. In 1998, the Animal Liberation Front raided a mink farm in Hampshire. Uh, they released 6,000 mink into the new forest. Now, luckily, there was a massive retrieval program and most of those were recaptured. In the year 2000, there was a second raid on the same location where 700 mink were released. And then in 2001, a third raid and anything between 100 to 500 mink were released. What's so bad about that? Well, like many of the mustelids, American mink are predators. They are pretty much strictly carnivorous. They'll eat fish, frogs, and small mammals. They'll take young birds, uh, anything from ducklings to guillemots. Uh, they'll go after ground nesting birds, such as lapwing and snipe. They'll even eat creepy crawlies, invertebrates, anything from crayfish to crabs. Worst of all, they've had a massive and devastating impact on the water vole population. Water voles dig burrows to stay safe from things like herons and otters. They can't get into the burrow after them. But the mink are smaller. The mink can get right into the water vole burrow and, unfortunately, eat the vole. A single mink will quite happily work its way up a stream, stopping at each and every vole hole as it goes, eating the residents. And in some areas, we've seen a population crash of up to 90% in the water voles. I should say there are no longer any fur farms with mink in Britain. In the year 2000, uh, a law was passed known as the Fur Farming Prohibition Act, which bans the keeping of mink for slaughter for their fur. The farms were given up until the 1st of January 2003 to close down. Any of the mink remaining in Britain are ones that have come from the releases or the escapes. So why on earth do we have an American mink here at Wildwood? Well, there are three main reasons. First of all, they are an introduced species. A lot of people would instantly say, well, that's a good reason for not having them. Here at Wildwood, we have British wildlife, past, present, future, almost. We have animals that were here in the Ice Age. We have animals that became extinct here. We have animals that we currently have living perfectly wild and free in Britain today. And we also have species that have been introduced. Some of them we don't even think of as introduced species the little owl, the fallow deer, even the brown rats. So we have to acknowledge that the American mink are part of British wildlife today. The second reason is recognition. As I mentioned earlier, quite often people will mix up otters and mink. It's often fairly tricky to see mink in the wild. By having one here, you can actually see what they look like. And finally, education. The truth is, it is not the fault of the mink. Mink uh, quite often are demonised. It's quite easy to do. Uh, you'll hear newscasters saying about the harmless, gentle, vegetarian, cute, cuddly little voles. 
and the ferocious predators, the savage carnivores that are preying on them. The truth is, as I say, it is not the mink's fault. They are good predators, they're good at what they do. They're only here because we brought them here. It isn't their fault. And I'd honestly say that Neo is a very good ambassador for his species. As I say, in character he's bright, lively, inquisitive, he's already made a lot of friends. So hopefully when you visit you'll get a chance to see him, and we hope you have a great time out here at Wildwood.